of mankind has two to five clans playing across multiple generations in order to lead their people to success. Tasty Minstrel Games provided this in exchange for an honest review. Shuffle the setup cards and reveal, face up, cards equal to the number of players. Shuffle the art cards, then place four face up along the bottom of the board. Keep the rest nearby. Separate progress cards by name, remove cards that are greater than the player count, and randomly choose five stacks face up along the top of the board. Each stack will be arranged from lowest cost to highest. Finally, separate the double-sided action tiles by color, then randomize and place them on the board based on their shape. At the start, you'll either choose one of these cards or place a clan maple on the board in reverse turn order. If you choose a card, adjust the trackers on your inventory mat. You begin the game with three clan meeples on the board. Let's look at the board now. You cannot put a clan meeple in the same space as another unless all spaces in the first three columns are full. If possible, place your meeple in the column with the fewest opponents. Also, you can only have one meeple per column. Once everyone is ready to start, you'll take your turns in clockwise order this time. On your turn, you'll either perform an action or rest. To perform an action, move one meeple from a ready area along the path onto an action tile, then pay and or collect the resources shown. As a child, your actions will be limited. Spend a tool to catch meat, and so on. As a teen and adult, you'll be able to do a significant amount of hunting and gathering, trading, and so on. You'll be also making newborns, meaning bringing new clan meeples into the starting area by choosing certain paths. As an elder, you'll be passing on everything you've learned to younger generations. You'll also make art. To make art, you'll pay resources in exchange for victory points, then slide the tracker down to the next spot. Once the final spot has been fulfilled, replace the art card with a new one. Progress cards are gained by landing on a progress, fire icon, action tile. These will help you gather even more resources, change endgame scoring, or take a different action than the tile you're on. I mentioned passing the newborn icons along the paths. The real trick to the game is what happens when you're on an action tile. You're stuck there. Not forever though, but you are there until someone bumps you into the ready area by moving onto the same tile. As long as you have a meeple in a ready area, you can move. If not, you need to rest. Rest by moving all your clan meeples into the next ready area. There's more. When you rest, collect elder clan meeples from the final ready area. You may now cook, meaning trade some food for victory points. Another option is to expand your tribe, meaning you trade all of your food to put out a new clan maple in the starting ready area. Finally, food in the brown spots on your mat, spoil. Slide meat down to three and fruit to six. At the end of your turn, check your points. If you have 60 or more, let everyone know. The game immediately ends and you all do final scoring. Progress cards are worth two points and meeples on the board are worth one point. You earn one point for every two fruit and or meat combination and two points for every two hides and or tools. For example, one meat and three apples are worth two points. One tool and two hides are worth two points. Some progress cards change endgame scoring, but this is the base scoring system. The winner is the player with the highest point total. Move maples along the paths to expand your clan and or perform the actions that'll help you get the resources and points you need. That's Dawn of Mankind. Once you know what you're doing, Dawn of Mankind can be played in around 45 minutes, including setup and takedown. Expect your first game or games with five people to be close to 75 minutes. Three people can play on a coffee table. We did at grandma's. Any more than that should stick to dining tables. It's not a large game, 
but it's not tiny either. Rectangular tables work better than circular ones. Experienced eight-year-old gamers will probably be fine. There's lots of mental math, but it's simple addition up to six years though. There's reading, but the symbols and icons are straightforward. If seven and eight-year-olds are having a bit of trouble, leave out the trickier progress cards like adaptability and maybe play to a lower score. You could even play with the scoring tokens visible instead of secret. In our fourth game of Dawn of Mankind, I was stuck with three clan meeples waiting to move to the final action tiles. Mom was racking up points and dad was desperate for tools. I wanted to go for the spots that were worth five points but didn't want to waste food because I had the religion card. With mom looking close to 60 points, I just went for the easy two points. It put me over 60, but I was really worried about mom. In the end, I won 74 to 71. Dad had 68. That was close. Dawn of Mankind's best part is the tile mechanism. You can't move until you've been bumped and you can't bump yourself. You need to clog up the board with clan meeples so that you'll force others to bump you. I touched on this in Family Facts, but there's a lot of gameplay here in a short time. After you've played a few times to know how the game's engine building works, three can play this in under 45 minutes. Turns are really fast in this game because you can only do one of two actions. Your choices depend on the paths you chose as well as other players. Part of the reason the game plays quickly is the iconography is excellent. You can quickly figure things out or be refreshed when playing again. As usual, analysis paralysis plays a huge role here. AP means you freeze when you need to make decisions. If you freeze with every turn, yep, so much for those quick games. I like how starting setup is tied to the game. Maybe you want a path that leads to an early progress card or provides two new clan meeples. But maybe tools will be hard to get because of the way action tiles came out. So grabbing that card first is important. Very clever. This isn't a knock, but poor planning can really mess you up. If you don't take the paths that bring in new clan meeples and don't get resources to fulfill art cards, you'll spend all your turns resting and getting next to no points. Many games are like this, but I found it especially true here. I think there's plenty included in the box, but I also think that this could support an expansion with more action tiles and progress in art cards. On the bright side, the action tiles are double-sided. Nice. The inventory mats are fiddly and way too easy to bump. The tiny resource markers don't help. The dark blue on the elder action tiles can be a little difficult to see. Finally, there is a graphic typo on the game end section on the back of the inventory mats. The end is anticlimactic due to the secret victory points. You have an idea about who might be close to 60, but don't know for sure. All of a sudden, someone's like 60, and that's that, aside from final scoring. Dawn of Mankind is a good game that is best with at least four people. It's fine with three, but the extra players lead to more bumping and moving and a more exciting race for the cards. It has an interesting theme, the mechanisms work well with it, and it provides replayability. Just remember that people who prefer more control over their games might be frustrated at times.